In a recent interview with Chris Anderson, head of TED, <laughs> interesting title I actually checked on Twitter, Elon Musk had a lot to say about a whole bunch of topics. Today I want to break out about nine minutes of the interview and talk about full self-driving and why Elon thinks this is the year when it's actually going to happen. For those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So first of all, I just want to say that Ted is very, very tweaky about putting clips into other people's videos. So I won't include any clips from the interview itself for fear of having this video taken down for copyright infringement and stuff. So anyway, I'm not super a big fan of that because I think that Ted should be, you know, into people sharing knowledge and stuff. But anyway, that's the way life is. I will of course put a link to the original interview in the description. If you haven't watched it, you should definitely watch it. The part I'm going to talk about goes from about nine minutes to about 18 minutes. So, so it's about nine minute segment right there. The interview itself is like over an hour, I think an hour and six or seven minutes long. So anyway, you should definitely watch the whole interview at some point to get a feel for where Elon is about a whole bunch of topics. But I really want to focus on full self-driving today because of course I'm very, very interested in that. And I also think that while Elon kind of goes over a bunch of things that we already know for the most part, there are a bunch of little nuggets that are in there that's new information and really, really interesting to find out about. Okay, so first of all, Elon talks about false dawns and why it's so hard to predict when full self-driving will actually be better than human beings. So what he talks about, a false dawn, of course, is like, oh, there's light at the end of the tunnel, or I guess that's a different metaphor. I'm mixing my metaphors. But anyway, right, you see the dawn, you think like, oh, it's going to be a day that this full self-driving is going to be done. It's 2016. It's going to be done by 2017. And then what happens is that that false dawn goes away and it's back to darkness. And you're back into going like, oh gosh, I have no idea how how long it's going to take to solve this problem. It is a huge, huge problem. As Elon keeps saying, it's a major part of solving real world AI to be able to do full self-driving, which is one of the reasons I think they have such confidence that the Tesla bot is going to be able to, software wise at least, come online relatively quickly. And by the way, if you haven't caught my episode on the power source for the Tesla bot, you should definitely check that out. It's an interesting video. It's just a thought experiment. There's no reason why Tesla will actually do what we're talking about, but it's interesting to think about how batteries could be placed into the body of the Tesla bot in order to make it a more efficient thing and to have more power than it would if you just stuck them all in the torso. So why is it so hard to predict all of this stuff? Well, it comes down to log curves, as Elon says, and I love the fact that he just goes with a mathematical formula <laughs> instead of talking metaphorically. That very much goes to what I like to do, although I do like to do metaphors for people to help them out. But basically, a log curve looks like this. It's like an S shape, right? It goes up and then it flattens out. So this is the classic S shape curve to, uh, for a adoption, for example. That might be something that you have seen recently. A bunch of people have done videos on that. Tony Saba, Kathy Woods, a bunch of other people talk about the adoption curve. It starts very, very slowly. It's logarithmic. Then it increases and it goes very vertical, very rapidly in kind of a linear section, and then it tails off. The important part is the tail off. So what Elon is talking about with these log curves is that you're working, you're working, you're working, and all of a sudden it starts to jet up and you're like, oh my gosh, we're making progress so, so quickly. And you're like, yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And then the log curve tails off and it, it goes flat again. And so, you know, you get diminishing returns. You put in a ton of work and you only get a teeny, teeny bit of improvement. That's a point when you have to go back and you have to say to yourself, okay, now what do we do? We have to go back and we have to figure out some new architecture or some new tricks or some new data or something along those lines to overcome this. And then you start with another log curve. So you may be like up to here and what you have to do is go backwards to some extent to get to a place where you have a new log curve that can start, but then it accelerates. So it's kind of overlapping, and I'll try to put a graphic up here over the top of this so you can see it more visually. But it's like basically you go up, then you have to go back down again a little bit, then you go up, then you have to go back down again, then you go up, then you go back down again. So eventually you, you're kind of stacking up. But one of the reasons why 
people complain about this is that they see that retrenchment step, right? Two steps forward, one step back. They see the one step back and they're like, hey, what's going on with this? And what that is, is that's actually progress in disguise. But that's what Elon talks about when he talks about false dawns and log curves. He's saying that none of this stuff is simple. You don't know exactly what's gonna work. So you try something and you get to the max and then you realize that you've made a mistake. You have to go back a few steps and then you have to try again with something else. And so over time you improve and you get better, but it's a very, very long time to do something like that. And of course, it's very unpredictable how all of this is gonna work, which is one of the reasons why he says he doesn't know exactly when it's gonna happen, but he thinks it's gonna happen this year. Of course, as Elon and many other people have said, the world of driving is built for bio neural networks. In other words, ourselves. We got two cameras, we got <laughs> wetware and stuff, and we process all of that stuff. We, we see the world around us, we react properly, and we drive the car properly most of the time. And so Elon is very convinced that vision and neural networks is the way to go. I am too, I think they're on the right track. Hopefully the architectural tweaks that they're doing are improving this all the time. We're gonna have to wait for full self-driving 11 or whatever this single stack thing is to really, really see the progress, but I'm gonna get to that later on in this video. So anyway, Elon says that this is the year. What does he mean by that? He's very specific now. He said it will exceed the average human driver. So remember, everything is on a bell curve when you're talking about statistics, right? It it's not better than the best driver, it's just going to be better than the average driver. The thing that he doesn't talk about is exactly what multiple it's gonna be better. Is it gonna be 1.5 times better than the average driver, two times better than the average driver, 10 times better than the average driver? I don't know, right? So, it, But he's saying that this is the year that if you take the bell curve and you take the average driver right here, that Tesla full self-driving is going to be statistically significantly better, let's say maybe one standard deviation better than the average driver on the road. And that's an impressive accomplishment but it's not saying full level five autonomy by the end of the year. You can just get rid of the steering wheel and the accelerator pedal and the car will do itself. He's, he's really backed off and become very specific in his prediction. So everybody should keep track of that. I think that that is still an incredible benchmark if we get to that point because it means that it's very, very close to being solved. But of course, remember, even on this, we're still gonna be on a log curve, right? So we might be on the steep slope where we're gaining a lot of ground really quickly, but eventually that's going to level off also. So there could be other architectures to come. In fact, there probably will be other architectures to come, but we will be getting better than the average human driver by this year, and then it's just gonna be building on that advantage. So how does this all work? Well, as I've said in many videos before, and you can check those out here, the key to all of this is to create a high quality unified vector space. That was Elon Musk's quote, more or less. But anyway, the same thing that I've been saying. So basically what you need to do is you need to solve this massive bunch of pixels that are out there, you need to turn it into something that's more or less a video game, right? Where you know, well, like, this is car, this is car, this is road, this is building, this is tree, that's person. It needs to understand these objects. Once you do that, that's really the crux of the problem. And as Elon says, video resolves ambiguity. So they started off by still frames, right? So you have a still frame and a still frame and a still frame and a still frame, and you have eight of those per every 36th of a second or however often their frame rate is. The problem with that is even for human beings, if you look at a still frame of something and you, you get asked like, how fast is that car driving over there? Or how fast is that person going? Or are they crossing the street or standing still? It's difficult to know this. So one of the really important things that he talks about is a synchronized video using all eight cameras into one sort of surround sound video. Extremely, extremely complicated thing to do, but they have licked that problem, which is one of the reasons why I think he's so confident it's going to be solved relatively quickly. One thing that I found super interesting was Elon talking about the human labeling aspect of it. So what he says is that humans are really in the loop a lot for all of this stuff. Human labeling is still really, really important. What they've done is they've gone from still frame labeling of eight individual cameras to now it's a surround label with video, so it's continuous continuous labeling, which is very labor intensive, but it's much, much easier for a human being to do video where you can see all of this stuff and it's all synchronized together so it all matches up and everything so you can actually do something like that in a reasonable amount of time. But here's the problem. As Elon said, it takes several hours to label a 10 second video clip and I feel bad for the labelers. That's a lot of work for a tiny amount of stuff. So that's not scalable. So what they've done is they've built an auto labeling software tool 
people with human in the loop. So essentially what's happening is that the auto labeling software is doing the labeling on the front end and the humans are editors for this auto labeled software. So in other words, what they do is they correct errors that the auto labeler gives them. I'm sure at the beginning, the auto labeler was mostly feeding errors. So there was a lot of corrections, but the cool part is that as humans make corrections, it's human in the loop training. So basically the, the neural network can actually learn from the human corrections and it can improve and improve and improve, which means that humans are needed less and less and less over time. And as Elon said, what that means is the auto labeler can figure out what are cars, what are lane lines, what are driving spaces, additionally vulnerable road users, lights, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And in the end, what you get is a vector space representation of the world, which like I said, is like a video game rather than a bag of points. And I did a video on that if you're interested about that. And then what you need to add to all of this next is you have to have time and space memory. So you can't just remember, say the last 10 seconds or something, but you also have to remember perhaps the last 100 meters. So in particular, if you stopped at like a traffic light, you need to remember where everything is for a much longer than 10 seconds while you're sitting at that stoplight. So you need both a temporal memory and you also need a spatial memory. Same thing happens if you're sitting and waiting at a light and you see a pedestrian start to cross the street and they go behind an object like a truck or something, as Elon says, you have to know that they're gonna be coming out the other side of that or they might turn around and go back the other direction. But anyway, you have to remember that. That's not so much a temporal memory at that point because everything is stopped, it's a spatial memory. And so it remembers, remembers, remembers until it sees this thing appear again. So anyway, all of that is really important. It's really important to remember both in space and in time. Memory is not infinite in these full self-driving boards. Of course, they're, you know, they're, they're small computers. They only have a certain amount of RAM. So how much do you try to remember? You need to remember things like occlusions. You need to remember time, but you also need to remember space. Elon also dropped a really interesting little piece of information on us, and that is that there are 100,000 people in the beta testing program now. So that is new news. The last we'd heard it was 60,000. So clearly they just keep increasing and increasing. And I don't know exactly how many cars in the United States, how many Teslas are on the road right now, but it's probably on the order of about a million or maybe a little bit more than that. So we could be looking at five to 10% of the entire Tesla fleet could actually be on full self-driving beta at this point. So that is really, really cool to find out. Another interesting data point is that Elon said that his version of full self-driving drives him around Austin all the time with no interventions, but he must have a little bit better version than most of us have because I noticed that when we were driving around in Austin using the full self-driving computers in uh, friends' cars, because of course we didn't have one, but as we were driving around in other people's cars, we noticed it had some issues with the weird access ramps and things like that that are in Texas that are not common in the rest of the country. So I expect that Elon is driving a more advanced version of the software. And eventually, of course, we'll get that version and that will help us to drive in these weirder situations that it's not particularly good at right now. Chris did note that the beta software, when he watches videos of it, and stuff. Sometimes it does weird things. And Elon said, yes, it's still a beta, right? So it is still a beta. It's definitely designated as that. And you do have to be careful about it because it can do weird things once in a while. But that amount, at least in my experience, the amount of interventions like that are going down and down and down and down. When I do interventions these days, it's mostly because I'm just frustrated because the car doesn't drive as efficiently as I would like it to. And I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. So anyway, Elon said that with, you know, you've got 100,000 cars out there, there's a lot of data. And the data indicates that this is the year that full self-driving is going to be significantly better than the average human driver. But of course, as always, Elon said, this is a prediction and the log curve could level off and things could, you know, kind of flatten out for a while. And he says to Chris, we could be here in another year where I'm like, oops, I didn't quite make it this year. It'll be next year or something, right? So anyway, he's making predictions. They are not necessarily going to come true. He's trying to use the data to prognosticate the future, but that is the future. And that by definition, we just don't know what's gonna happen. And then Elon turns to ambitious timeline lines and motivation because he says nothing ever gets done early, which is kind of funny. So that was the chunk of stuff that Elon Musk discussed about full self-driving. So where are we now from my perspective? First of all, in terms of safety, I think we really are very, very safe with the full self-driving beta. With efficiency, we are not there yet. And I'm a really, really uptight, assertive driver who is all about efficiency in normal drives. In other words, I wanna get there faster. I don't wanna be sitting behind a person who's going slow. You know, I wanna to get to places as efficiently as possible. Plus, I believe that efficiency actually increases safety too because you're actually paying attention to the best possible outcomes of a given drive. And of course, as I'm sure most of you understand from personal experience, if you know a place, you tend to drive it better. Assuming, of course, you still pay attention 
attention because it might be your daily commute and you might not pay attention anymore. So there is an actual trade-off. At some point, you become bored. Fortunately, computers don't do that, so they don't have that problem. And in order to make things more efficient, memorization on a larger scale is necessary to make things more efficient and safer from full self-driving's point of view. Right now, it really feels like the movie 50 First Dates. It's like every time the car pulls out of the driveway, it's like, oh, it's a new place. <laughs> so if you imagine going to like a new city and driving in a place you've never been before, you're going to be more cautious. You're going to be liable to make more mistakes. You're, you're not going to drive as efficiently or quite as well as you do in a place that you know well. So I think that that's really, really important and Tesla needs to think about how to do sort of meta memorization. So not moment to moment, but more big picture sort of stuff. However, a little birdie who actually should know what's going on told me that something along the lines of memorization is in the works. I can't really discuss this now, and honestly, it's mostly because I'm still trying to figure out exactly how this is going to be instantiated. I'm not exactly sure, but I think it is really cool to know that, as far as I understand it, Tesla is really thinking strongly about how to do something that I'm talking about, how to understand environments that it's been in before better, and how to utilize that information for the fleet so it can drive better and more efficiently. So as most of you know, things have been a little bit slow recently with new beta builds being released, but it sounds like behind the scenes, things are apparently moving along really, really well. Of course, it is still a beta, but Elon is confident that it's going to be this year. And again, specifically, that means that it's going to be better than an average human driver by some meaningful, statistically significant degree. And remember, this is just the start. The new full stack that's coming with version 11 or whatever is going to improve many, many things. And the ability to to know environments better will improve things as well. And of course, more data and more efficient auto labeling is going to improve things as well. In other words, the future is starting to look pretty bright for Tesla and full self-driving. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and thought-provoking. If you did, please do like it so other people can find this video. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. We're actually looking at a potential road trip down to Boca Chica this summer with maybe a stop in Austin as well. And if you want to find out more of the details on all of that, definitely look into joining the team on Patreon. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Teslabot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, Success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.